In the last video, we talked about the different methods of projection being perspective and parallel. And then within parallel, we talked about obliques, we talked about isometrics, we talked about multi view projections. So now we're going to focus on multi views. And we're going to look at ways that we can take a 3D object and represent it in 2D using multi view projection. Because that is the standard way of, of showing draw, showing parts in manufacturing. <clears throat> so we really need to think about how we take what we had on our sketch of it and how we actually make that a, a nice exact drawing um, that we can use. So the first thing that we need to do is you know pick our front view. So on this one we had said that we were picking this view as the front. And the front view is the view that we want to be we want to have that's the most descriptive about a part. So if we look that we can see more about the overall shape than any other view. So like this one gives us more of an overall that yes it's a big L and this one shows us yeah there's a cutout on this one also. Um, so take for example a car. If you had a car, which would be the front view? Would it be the front of the car or the side of the car? Which gives you more of a view about an idea of what the car is. I would say that the side of the car is a better front view because if you look at the side of the car you can tell pretty much what model it is right off the bat. If you look at the front, maybe some headlights or something might give it away, but most cars look pretty much the same from the front. Um, at least in, in overall uh, the outline. So the side view would be a better front view of a car because it gives you more of a shape of it. So that's the same thing we're doing here. We're picking the front view and we're just going to call it the front. Once you start drawing, it doesn't matter which ones are which, just because it depends on how they line up, which we're going to talk about today. So we pick our front view, and then we also want to decide how many other views we need. And so we want to pick views, and we want to use the least amount of views possible to describe the shape. So in this part, this view gives us good information. This view gives us good information. It gives us the size of this cutout. Does this view really give us anything that we don't already have between these? Not really. With these two views, we see this cutout and we see this cutout. This view doesn't really give us anything new. Um, <clears throat> so we probably wouldn't even need to draw that. We could just get away with two views here. But there might be this just we might need more things. So let's say if there was a on the underside of this there is a a pocket or something so let's say there was on the bottom of this part there was a little bit of a a notch or something that didn't go all the way through it just went like that so these dashed lines those are called hidden lines um, so that's showing us something that's on the inside of a part and so we'd use that some kind of hidden line up here also showing those us these features that we couldn't see from the bottom. But this one here see just by not having control enough over where things were and projecting it, I'm getting kind of a, a mixed feeling of what's what and I'm losing things aren't lined up and but I get the idea. So in this case, I might need a bottom view to see this extra feature. And so you can have more than three views also. So we can have the front, the right, the top, the bottom. We could have a left. And we could also have a back view either beside the right view, besides the left view, above the top view, or below the bottom view. Just kind of we're always flipping and rotating. So we had the front, then we had the right, and we could go right to the, the back view if we put it here looking this way at the right view. <clears throat> so we can just keep going and, and making any other successive views that we need. So when we're drawing views we've got a few steps. So these are just my general guidelines for how I like to draw views and I've figured that that work pretty good. So I'd like to draw <clears throat> as much as the front view as possible. And as much of the front view with the visible lines as I can. Um, so if we go here we have this little one. So front view, 
I could probably draw that whole thing because I can measure all this thing, all these lines out, and draw that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Pretty sure that goes all the way up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then down two. Back in three. Down two more. Back out to the front. So on this one, I was able to draw the whole front view. So if I look back at the next step. It's project my lines up and across. So I want to take those lines. And so from any points or vertical surfaces, this one's all square surfaces that are flat. So we can just from all the corners. So anytime there's a corner, you have to project it to the next view. So I'm going to take this line and I want to project that across here. Take that point project it across, take that point, project it across, take that and project it, and the same thing going up. <clears throat> so the next step is creating my minor line, which I already have done here. That's what this is. This is called the minor line. And so the way this is done is that if we take oops if we take our front line there and our front line there and I bring both those up you'll see that I hit the front of that minor line. And so that's given us so if this view is further to the right, this whole minor line and the view would move to the right. If the top view was higher, the minor line would move up. And with the minor line, it's a 45 degree line, so that means that anything that we have on the depth here is going to correspond with the depth here. So on our views, we have we have the width going side to side. We have the height going up and down and we have the depth going front to back. Like that. So we have height, width, and depth. And so the depth has to be the same in both the side view and the top view because the depth here it's the same. So get rid of all that. So our minor line lets us translate distances from one to the other. So if I drew this, this back line, use my straight line, then I projected that to here, and then I could come across this way, and then it's the same distance. And so by using the, the miter line, it lets us project things from the top view to the side view, and from the side view back to the top view. <coughs> so we can, the next step on our thing was, <coughs> after creating my line, was to, to draw as much of the top or side views as we can and then we'll project lines back to the front view or to the other views as needed um, to complete the drawing. So on this drawing it's a pretty straightforward drawing. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and we know there's a bottom there. We know we have an edge here. We have an edge there. And we had a top line there. 
So from the right side, so if you're looking from here, going this way, we can see a line there. We can see a line from this corner. We can see a line from this corner. And because when we're looking straight at it, this corner and this corner would line up. Same thing here, this corner and this corner would line up, and all we would see would be one line representing that entire surface. And these surfaces that are flat like this, they're called normal surfaces because they're perpendicular to the next view. So same thing on the top. We know we have a line there. We have a line there. And we have a line there. So is that it? Are we done? I hope you said no because we have a corner here that I didn't project yet. I'm going to project this one in in green so we can kind of see it a little better once I draw my line over it. So I'm going to project that up. And this line, if we're looking at our view here and we're looking down from the top, can we see that edge? And the answer is no. It's because we're looking down the top, we see the solid surface here, then that edge is a cut underneath it. And so we can see that same thing here from because if we go from the top view, we're going to go down we're going to hit this other line before we hit there. And it's important that this line and this line are both on the same face here. If they weren't on the same face, it would it'd be a little trickier, but it, since they're on the same face, we know that this point is being hidden by this line. So we're going to represent this with a hidden line, and that's our dashed line. So it's going to be little dashed line. And if we were doing this in CAD, we just pick a hidden line for it and it would, would be done. Oops. So that would be what our view looks like. So we've got this here. Oops, I guess I forgot those front lines. Better redraw those. Erase that line too. Ah. You get the idea. So that's that's our drawing on this one. So on this one, we'll do the same thing. We'll just kind of move through a little quicker. So first step, draw the front view. This view gives us the overall shape, so that'll be our front. So that's as much as the front view we can draw of because this cut out here, that's going to be hidden. So it's better to draw it where we see it visible. So we're going to go ahead and project up to the top view. I'm just going to use some yellow lines here to project up because I think the top view, we can get this right away. So we'll do that. So we'll draw our front line. Go back one, go in two, up three. And we'll draw this one across. And you could say, yeah, well, I can see it's two, and I'll just draw this line here at two. But it, it's, we're trying to get in good habits here, and, and the good habit is always to draw it where you see it visible, and then project it down to the next view. So we're trying to get that, that good habit going. It'll make more complex drawings easier. So now I can take this and project it back down and draw my hidden line. So now I'm going to come over to my side view, project, always project, 
if you just decided you're going to measure it and, and that you, you don't need to project it, that's when you run into trouble. If you project it, you usually don't have any problems unless you forget to project something. If you don't project something, you just measure it, that's usually when you run into problems and things don't line up um, correctly or you get things the wrong size or you flip your view app by accident. So we always want to project. So I'm just drawing this around here because I know that that outline is like that. And then, ooh, now we've got some lines crossing each other. So what goes where? So if you said that this line goes all the way across here, you're right, because this part here, this part, and this part would all line up to make this surface. So we know that that's going to go all the way across. <clears throat> and then we have this line to worry about. And so for most cases, you'll, you won't have two saw lines crossing at a point. So would almost never have something like this. <clears throat> so where do those lines go? Do they go on the top or the bottom? Well, if we look over here, we can see that the bottom half is where that line is. <clears throat> you can also see over here that if this line is representing this part, and these lines are representing this the surface here, which is in here, that's only on the bottom half of the view. It's not the top half of it right here is empty. So it's going to be on the bottom. So we'll put that in there, and that in there, and we'll be done.